You're welcome back. It's still Plus Politics on Plus TV Africa. The All Progressive Congress, APC, and the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has asked the Presidential Election Petition Court in Abuja to dismiss Peter Obi's petition challenging Mr. Bola Tinubu's victory. Mr. Obi was uh, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party. He came third in the 25th of February presidential election. He and the Labour Party, who are co-petitioners, are seeking to upturn Mr. Tinubu's victory as Nigeria's president-elect. Tinubu, who was APC presidential candidate, polled 8.8 .8 million votes to beat Atiku Abubakar of the People's Democratic Party, who came second in the race. Both Atiku and Obi and three other political parties with their candidates are contesting the outcome of the presidential polls, alleging irregularities ranging from INEX failure to upload election results from the polling stations in real time to its IREV portal. Meanwhile, the Independent National Electoral Commission will conduct supplementary elections in 2,660 polling units across 185 local government areas of 24 states tomorrow, which is April 15th. Elections for 26 governorship, 104 senatorial, 329 national, and 935 state assembly seats had been concluded and winners declared. According to the Commission, all outstanding governorship, national and state assembly supplementary elections will be held where they were previously suspended due to hitches like violence for which the exercise was declared inconclusive. While joining us to discuss this uh, is Taiwo Olakbadi, a broadcast journalist and public affairs analyst. Good evening and welcome to the program, uh, Taiwo. Hello, good evening. Thanks for Okay, it's interesting times. Just before the elections, during the elections, and now after the elections, and maybe in some parts, as the case may be, it is before the elections, because where election, elections were cancelled, we are going to have supplementary elections, so it is uh, another round of elections that is going to happen. And right now, first of all, how confident are you that INEC might even want to use this to redeem their image. Do you think they will do better in these supplementary elections than they did in the main elections of February 25th and March 18th? Can you hear me? Hello, can I react? Sorry? Can I go on? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the bottom line is uh, there is no perfect election in anywhere around the world. Even you recall that uh, the US election that brought in uh, President Joe Biden, uh, at a point, the, uh, the, the candidate of the Republican, uh, uh, former President Donald Trump, uh, was accused of trying to uh, hack the election through the Russian uh, experts. So, if uh, we had a situation where some Nigerians are saying that uh, the election is not free, as well, that's their own uh, view about the conduct of the uh, election of INEC. But be that as it may, it is also a legal uh, move by any political party or candidate that felt aggrieved or felt cheated at that election to approach election participants uh, uh, to seek the best rather than go violent or want to cut beat uh, uh, law and uh, order in the country. And even at the level of uh, election presidential tribunal, if the outcome is not in your favor, you can still take the matter up to the Supreme Court. That's what is allowed by the nation's constitution. But in the case of uh, the petition filed by the Labour Party, the Labour Party candidate, I want to quickly draw reference to the election that brought in President Muhammad Buhari in uh, 2015. Former President Gulu Jonathan was the first to congratulate President Buhari when the, ele the announcement of that election, the, the, the announcement has not been done. It was Jonathan when he saw the way 
the results were trickling you already, you already knew that it was not going to win that election. And at that point, even members of the PDP were meeting on how to say no, that's not what we are saying. We are going to the tribunal, we are going to appeal, we are going to speak today. But Jonathan, in his wisdom, all President Mohamed Dwar and congratulated him. And that was how any move that the PDP to find an appeal to bring that election you know, was altered by the action of uh, the Jonathan Day. And I want to want to say that uh, even the current president is thought that a contest for this presidential on three occasions. So he also approved us, believing that uh, uh, he won that election. But the tribunal did not rule he still approached the apex court, which is the Supreme Court, and in the same manner, uh, the outcome was not favorable. So back to the Labour Party candidate, the LLC, Mr. Peter Oti, the man and the governor, he has the right, his right and constitutional right, was not to go to the election. Can you hear me, Taiwo? Just a moment, Taiwo. Just a moment. Okay. Just a moment. Okay. My question okay. is not whether people should take any other means to address the issues on ground. My question is, do you think INEC will do a better job in the supplementary elections than they did in the main elections? That was my question. Do you have confidence that there will be an improvement or it will still just be the same way it happened in, uh, in February and in March? Okay, uh, we are likely to see that happen tomorrow where yeah, we are having supplementary elections in the uh, two, two states, uh, two gubernatorial elections that was uh, declared inconsistent by INEC. That's the uh, Adamawa and the city state. And we also have from the National Assembly and House of Assembly elections. At the moment, INEC has choose a little to about 100 senators in the and about 330 House of Reps member in there. Mm -hmm. So we have 360 House of Reps, and we have more than nine So, back to your question. When we had the February 26th presidential election, I was showing you so, that some last week that some Nigerians uh, pointed out to IMEC. And when IMEC went back to the drawing board and uh, conducted the March 18th, Election. We record that uh, the government election was held two weeks after the presidential. But because of the fact that INEC uh, said they were going to uh, re reactivate the gas machine in order to meet up the standard of uh, the government election, they had to put that election by one week. And many Nigerians, political parties across party lines, commended INEC that there was an improvement in the conduct of the uh, government election compared to the experience of uh, the February 25th presidential election. That does not mean that uh, the February 25th uh, was not also something to but there was an appreciable improvement in the conduct of the government but I like as to take some time to also go back to the joint, look at the last six, look at the state uh, that of course and uh, they were able to make amends. And uh, I'm hoping, uh, going by what the National Commission in charge of information uh, uh, said about uh, this tomorrow's election, I hope IMEC will move up to the expectation because this is the final lap of the uh, 2023 general election. By the time we have this election tomorrow, that means we have completed the election cycle. 23 uh, general election. Okay, uh, well, um, just give some pointers. Tomorrow, um, the elections will hold, and if you were to um, advise, what are some of the things that you would want INEC to do in these supplementary elections to give it more credibility and all that? From your observation of the previous elections, what would you want them, even if they can't do everything else, maybe 
uh, two or three things that you feel that they must take uh, into consideration as they go into the elections tomorrow? Okay, for tomorrow, for the next election, IMS must ensure that, number one, that the staff that we also uh, be participating in that election arrive at the unit election materials as an accurate who will be there as early as the top of body because I know that uh, some of the electorate will also uh, get to their polling duty as early as some of the world there in about. So any arrival in the open unit by either the primary domain, let share to the election day as transparent and fair enough. The other one is to ensure that the private machine work according to the rules. They should ensure that the if 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 that we we, we we may have to have some tools of uh e commerce it shouldn't be case of uh, oh in in the polling unit it's the state uh givers will not work in most of the polling unit that will not that will shouldn't be a case that tomorrow's election. They are expecting that givers will also work well. Another factor that we also ensure that people also come out and participate is for us to also have security men on ground. There is need for security of life and property through that election and after that election today. Because in a case where people are uh, said like uh, their, their lives are not secure, their property are not secure, that could also lead to total apathy at that election. But if there is maximum deployment of police, in every polling unit, it guarantees safety of that property and it will encourage uh, eligible uh, voter electorate and the people to come out and start their vote for every candidate. I think these are some of the necessities in this election to seen as fair and credible tomorrow. Okay, um, well, uh, salient points. Uh, arrival of materials on time, uh, security, and uh, beavers must work. Uh, we do hope that the supplementary elections will be uh, such an election that will give um, INEC a better image than uh, it had in the other elections. Uh, thank you so much, Taiwo Holakwade, for coming on our program this evening. Thank you so much for having Okay, we've been talking with Taiwo Lakwade, a broadcast journalist and a public affairs analyst on the issues uh, that, uh, uh, on the issue of uh, uh, the supplementary elections coming up uh, tomorrow. We do hope that you had a wonderful time watching the program today. That's where we wrap up, but as we leave, we'll leave you with highlights of the week. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Have a wonderful weekend. We have good leaders. We have good leaders who are very good in managing things. And I want to say this directly to every Nigerian out there. We have good leaders. It's not that we have leaders, uh, we're suffering from leaders. We have good We have good leaders. We have good leaders who are very good in managing things. And I want to say this directly to every Nigerian out there. We have good leaders. It's not that we have leaders, uh, we're suffering from leaders. We have good educated people. But the problem is we lack visionaries. You see, to be a visionary, you don't have to have the, all the education in the world. You just have to be a man of purpose, a man of intention, and a man of goal. And that's what we're lacking. Because Nigeria is the most educated people in the whole of Africa. And I can assure you there's no part of, Af a part of the world you will go, you will not see a bulging level of educated Nigerians. In fact, in America, one of the top minority vast uh, educated people in America are Nigerians. Same in Europe. So we're not suffering from lack of educated people. In Nigeria, we're not suffering from lack of educated people either. So it means we have educated people. We're not suffering from leaders. We have leaders. We have great pastors. We have great imams. We have great kings. 
It's not we're suffering from leaders, for visionaries. Like Moses said, I've been to the mountain top and I'm back. I have seen the glory of God. We need visionaries. He said, I'm taking you to a place. There's flowing with milk and honey. We need visionaries. He said, when pe- the people who came back, who went to spy uh, uh, um, uh, Israel, when they came back, they said, some naysayers. And the, o- and the other said, what? It's a place flowing with milk and honey. This is why I can't wait for the noise around all oh, elections to move on. Because there's a lot more to watch. This is a period where we should be setting agenda for whoever the new, I mean, the new administration, setting an agenda, putting out the markers, the things that we are going to watch, taking out, you know, uh, all the manifestos and all the talk and marking and asking, okay, is this happening? This is the time to do that. So, yes, civil society played a critical role. And I dare say even on elections day, as much as challenging as it was to get real-time on-the-ground information, especially because of the challenges that happened with IREF. The feelings, the grievances that people are feeling, the malcontents, and made things just just terrible. So, you know, so that is what has set the tone for what we are seeing now, where people are in an unprecedented manner. Some are even saying that the inauguration should not hold. That's how bad people feel. You know, so I think, you know, what set the tone for this is the amount of hope that have been created before the election and how much of an anticlimax the elections itself then turned out to be and how those hopes were dashed, you know. Um, hope deferred, make it the heart sick, the, the Holy Book says. So the worst thing you can do to a human being is to take hope away from them. When they become hopeless, it's as good as they're dead. And, you know, when a man feels that he's dead and there's no hope, believe me, there's nothing that he cannot do. It's personality of the, of the state and personality of the system the, the, this primary government, for me, to them, is the current government is first, you must create that economy, broad economic base where every economic, economic functionalities uh, are, are working. The, 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 the banking, the agricultural uh, sector, the oil and gas, there should be more openness and transparency in terms of how we deal with the people. You cannot, and the exchange rate for, for, for example, if I tell you the losses we have made in terms of insurance, how much money we have spent in terms of trying to do our security in terms of our insurance abroad, imagine what the exchange rate is and what you have here, um, the dollar exchange rate, we have to insure abroad uh, with the lawyers and other uh, uh, companies abroad because some of the uh, policies we cannot keep here. All but that we seem not having much of that solvency in terms of paying those uh, heavy risks when they, when they come. You have to take them abroad. And imagine what that will cost us.